I was just on Facebook and there was an ad concerning um, Sufi meditation. I don't know too much about Sufism. I think it came from maybe a combination between Hinduism and Islam. Uh, because a lot of the lingo that they're using is biblical lingo. Um, I mean, they've switched some words around to make it seem like it isn't, in my opinion. But it's amazing how people will go every single spiritual route but Christianity. And I think what it is is people are nervous about being perceived a certain way because Christians are perceived as very judgmental and hateful towards other people. Um, and we often get in the way of what they consider fun, which is often darkness. And so there's this negative perception of Christians most of the time. Um, and then we're often perceived as hypocrites and people will bring up things in the Bible, which, you know, a lot of times people don't understand what the Bible is saying. And it's hard to at times because understanding comes from the spirit. And if you don't have the spirit, then you're not going to understand it. Um, that's why Paul gave certain levels of the law to the Gentiles, because everything being bogged down on a person at once is just, it's too much to handle type deal. Um, and so this a Sufi meditation, I went to the website and, you know, it started off good, but then towards the middle of it. I started to get a little weary like it was talking about how the creator would send you um a guide i the first thing when i thought that i thought he was talking about a guide like himself oh when your search for the creator is over then you know he'll send you a guide like myself and to me if somebody's saying that they're saying i'm your leader you know do as i say i'm so close to the creator and that kind of thing um, but then the more I started to read it, the more I realized that, oh, he's talking about like a spiritual guide, like the guides that they have and all these different type of spiritual practices, basically witchcraft type deal. Um, and so that's why you got to watch out for these things because they sound like biblical or, you know, like a high path initially, but then they were talking about spiritual guides. It's like God doesn't just send spiritual guides to people, not in that way. I guess you can say the prophets and such were like spiritual guides to people, but they didn't last a whole lifetime type deal. Like when it was their time to be done, it was their time to be done. And then the Messiah came and you could say he's the spiritual guide, but these were all like physical prophets at that time. I guess you can say those spirits come upon us, you know, in certain seasons as well. Like one time the father told me I was supposed to be like in Ezekiel in that season. Um, man, that's crazy. I just feel like I got some revelation concerning that because <laughs> I was always telling people, I was like always, always, always warning people and people would be like, you're being so judgmental. But that's like what God had told Ezekiel do. He's like, go and warn my people. You know, these are people whose hearts are hardened, their forehead is hard and they're going to try to come for you. But I'm going to harden your forehead uh, against them, you know, and hopefully they'll repent type deal. And so I was constantly, constantly, constantly warning people. Um, because I did want to see them come out of what they were in, but also um, because when you're in sin and you're constantly teaching other people sinful things, like this girl, she was like, oh, you know, I just want to wear this mini dress with the sleeves, no sleeves and that kind of thing. And I told her that's not something that would honor God. Um, and she kind of went off and all these people were standing up for her. And I was like, are you more concerned about you and what you want or what God wants? And it started to get pretty heated. Um, but at the end of the day, she was told that for her own good, but also for the good of other people around her. So God had told Ezekiel that if you don't tell these people, you know, their blood is going to be on your hands. So if you do tell them and they refuse to repent, well then, you know, that's their own blood. So kind of funny that I just came to that realization that that really was who the spirit that was operating in. Um, and so... One of the next spirits, well, I don't want to say next, but the spirit of Elijah is very important because a lot of people have that anointing on them where they will be going around um, and basically telling people to repent for the kingdom of heaven draws near. And this is a spirit in which the church is con consistently, I don't want to say stuck in because they don't even really have the spirit of Elijah in the way that he was doing it, in the way that John was doing it, for example, because he had the spirit of Elijah. Um, but they think in their mind that they're consistently supposed to just be telling people about Jesus and they don't even have the spirit to do it. And even though you're supposed to preach the gospel in and out, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have that spirit of Elijah because John, John was decapitated, okay? 
he was pissing some people off. He had told the King Herod, you should not be having your brother's wife. Like, he was going for it. And this is why the churches, I say, do not have the spirit of Elijah because they will tell you not to judge in a minute. Even though they're going around, repent for the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. If you haven't gotten kicked out of the church yet, then tell me what's going on in your life because it says that the disciples will be kicked out of the churches and, and scourged in the synagogues and that kind of thing. John was decapitated for telling the king the word of God, which you should, which is you should not have your brother's wife type deal. But they don't do that in these churches. And so that's why a lot of them end up being lukewarm. But you have to have the spirit come on you in order to do these things at the same time. And those are only at certain point in times, but they try to make it seem like it's consistent you know but anyway um yeah so the sufism people refuse to do these the christianity because of those kinds of things because they're not going to want to be the one to go and tell uh the king that you know they shouldn't have that he shouldn't have his brother's wife or whatever so there's a lot of fear in that but at the same time there's blessing in it as well because if that person decides to listen then their whole soul can be saved from the wrath of god and so right now we're in the day of judgment we're pretty darn close to it at least and um <laughs> all this wrath is going to come on first the children of god and then the rest of the world because they are out of order with god and so what when you tell somebody don't do that because it's against God and they repent that means that judgment that is meant for them is not going to come on them because they decided to repent and turn to God so this is what the Messiah he said he said there's one that judges you at the end here we are um, most people don't want to deal with that they want to live and let live and that's why something like Sufism is so attractive because you can have all the spiritual the meditation and the prayer and the spirit guides but at the end of the day when you're not rebuking anyone like I was reading in Psalms today it was talking about how basically David or whoever was the um, writer was more or less like silent um, he wasn't saying much to rebuke people um, and that was because he was at the time of grief and that kind of thing the way it made it sound it just was not a good thing like you need to be rebuking people or else they're going to die um, or be judged really harshly in a way that is going to wreck their whole lives so and, you know, people want to live and let live and pray and do some meditation and freaking burn some sage and <laughs> to keep demons away you know why you have demons it's because your mentality is not aligned with god it has nothing to do with sage all right although i'm convinced like when you eat garlic you're killing a vampire because garlic be like cleaning out your whole insides i'm not even lying um you be feeling you be feeling garlicky but fresh afterwards and so I said that to say Sufism is not the way. It's not going to save you. Spirit guides are not going to save you. The only thing that's going to save you is God and God alone and his son, which is his word, his seed, um, that which leads us all to salvation. So be blessed and have a good one. Bye.